I'm a twin. I had a brother. His name was Pietro. He was killed by Ultron. What did you say? Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. This is going to be my WandaVision episode three video. There were so many Marvel Easter eggs and references. We'll break it all down. If you're new to the channel, I'm doing videos for all the WandaVision episodes. Be sure to subscribe to get everything. We're doing a Disney Plus giveaway for memberships, too. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and post your favorite WTF moment from the episode on the video. Thankfully, they are actually starting to move the plot forward. We're actually starting to see more outside of this normal alternate reality. So careful for spoilers if you haven't seen the episode yet. I'll just keep numbering the Easter eggs as we go along through the episode. There's way more than 10 Easter eggs, even though I normally do top 10 WTF videos. But they start with the new 1970s version of the intro scene. It's very Brady Bunch looking, very Partridge family with them preparing for the baby to come, putting together play sets, swings, running around the town. You just see a much more lively version of the intro, much more family based because they're getting ready to have a family. The title also you'll notice because everything's in color now because we're in the 1970s specifically states that it's in color. You also notice that the cameras they used to film were very different. The way they filmed the scenes, the way they blocked the shots off, it's all meant to be period specific as if they were shooting this during the actual 1970s, as if WandaVision and the MCU existed in the real life 1970s. Like if this were the Incredible Hulk TV show, there are actually a lot of similarities in some scenes later on that made me think of the Incredible Hulk TV show as well. Cool real life Easter egg though, Stan Lee during the 1970s was actually doing the Kevin Feige thing where he tried to create an early proto version of the MCU in Hollywood getting Marvel movies and Marvel TV shows made with their characters. But one of the first successes that he had was the Incredible Hulk TV show because everything's designed to look like 1970s architecture. You notice the colors in the background of the house or the colors of the Infinity Stones. You may recognize the celebrity cameo here. The doctor that's treating them is being played by Randy Oglesby from Star Trek Enterprise. He was the Degra character during the Zindi storyline in season three. He's done a bunch of stuff on TV, so you've probably seen him somewhere. They tell all kinds of jokes about how she could have possibly gotten pregnant because Vision is an android. How would he possibly get her pregnant? It's mostly because of the way her powers work, the way she can alter reality, her cosmic level abilities inside this alternate reality. She's basically a god inside this place. He makes the reference about fruit. I don't know if that's meant to be a Wondagore fruit reference from the comics, but his name is Dr. Nielsen. I don't know if that's also a Marvel reference. I couldn't find anything really big, but I don't think his name is a specific reference to a Marvel comic book character. Vision jokes about having nerves of steel because he is kind of a robot. They kind of set up the joke of the storyline about the doctor trying to go on vacation to Bermuda, which obviously they pay off at the end of the episode, sort of breaking the reality just a little bit, trying to reference what's actually going on. Like we're all kind of trapped in here. We're not going on vacation because it's kind of hard to leave. We learn more about their neighbor Herb. We saw him in all the trailers. He's cutting through the concrete, which is a reference to the sword agents trying to break into the alternate reality and cross the barrier. Like he says, they're all trapped in there later in the episode. They kind of stop short of telling Vision exactly what's happening though. But we see Vision use his super speed to catch the fruit. And the funny thing about this episode too is that for the most part, at least mostly, they visualize all their powers using 1970s level technology. So they make it look like it would look if it were happening during the 1970s. And I know a lot of people were thinking about Quicksilver when they saw this super speed scene during the trailer. We finally actually get a bunch of Quicksilver name drops during the episode too, talking about Pietro. I'll get to him in a second too. But then they said the whole running joke about her having contractions and it making her lose control of her powers. And remember, she's basically a god in this place. So every time she has a painful contraction, she changes something about the nature of the reality, but also her telekinesis just throws things all over the place at the same time. They finally start talking about their twins from the comics, Billy and Tommy. They have the joke about them trying to compete for which name they're going to use for the baby because they still think that it's just going to be one baby. If you're not really familiar with their children from the comics, eventually they wound up retconning them to be Wiccan and Speed, their Young Avengers characters. So I'll talk more about them in the future of the MCU later in the video. When they finish arguing about the boys' names and she says, what if it's a girl? That's also a reference to her sister from the comics, Polaris. So they haven't really done Polaris inside the MCU. I think this is just their way of referencing that comic book storyline. As they're painting the bedroom too, the Simser paint, that name is a reference to Jeremy Simser, who's a storyboard artist for a lot of the Marvel movies and he was a storyboard artist working on the WandaVision series. We see what's going on with Dottie and her husband, but the power goes out all over town. We actually find out later in the episode because Scarlet Witch's contractions get worse and worse and worse. 
The midget gets super serious, sort of questioning all the weird stuff that's been happening, like he notices some inconsistencies, like this doesn't line up, what's happening here? She pulls another no moment with the beekeeper and rewinds time, only they do it like the 1970s version of the effect, so it feels more like a jump cut rewind, which is really funny, it's more 1970s TV comedy. It's just the instant, boom, nope, do over, we're gonna try that again. Marvel's alternate title for the WandaVision series should just be The Do Over. But then as they redo the version of the scene, this time Vision doesn't acknowledge any of the super weird stuff and they just focus on the relative anxiety over becoming parents with the baby. Thinking that it's one baby still, not knowing that it's twins. She also references Synthesoid because that's what Vision technically is in the comics. He's really more of an android. They do another callback to them competing over what the name's going to be. Billy? You mean Tommy, right? Then they joke about Vision getting sympathetic contractions, floating into the air, briefly losing control of his powers. So obviously they do this more and more through the episode. Like later he uses his powers in front of the doctor and he doesn't really question it. Like, please make sure that we walk this time. I laughed so hard when they did the water breaking scene because instantly you know everything is meant to be a metaphor, but because of her powers and the way they work, the metaphors in the reality turn into literal things. So the metaphor of it raining inside the house is literally her water breaking. But you also find later in the episode, Geraldine, Monica Rambeau's character, said that it was raining inside her house as well. Here's the weird thing about that too, because later Akatha Harkness, when she's talking with Herb, says that Geraldine, or Monica Rambeau, whatever you want to call her during the episode, doesn't actually have a home. So it's sort of like they're watching Scarlet Witch, knowing that she's pregnant, knowing that her water broke. And that's when she broke into the reality again, trying to investigate what's going on. When they do this pose like this here, when everything starts going really weird, it's meant to be them mirroring the pose from the comic book cover from Vision and Scarlet Witch number one in their miniseries. But then they have their 1970s commercial during this episode, and the boxy transitions kind of remind you of the transitions during the 1970s Incredible Hulk TV show, because that was also during the 1970s. It's a mom getting really exasperated, her kids, their friends wrecking everything, the dog peeing on everything, cornflakes, the 1970s version of the box. I'm surprised they cleared that. Normally really big brands like Kellogg's won't allow stuff like that. She burns the roast, the blender makes a giant mess, and then steps in front of the scenes and it turns into this big ad for bath soap, but it's Hydra bath soap. Find the goddess within. The narrator starts talking about going to a world of your own to get away from all your problems. That's literally what Scarlet Witch did, so obviously this is all meant to reference what's actually happening in this reality. The whole line about finding the goddess within I think is mostly a reference to Scarlet Witch unlocking more of her reality altering powers inside this alternate reality, greater cosmic powers, because she is one of the most powerful Avengers. The Hydra soap a lot of you also recognize is a callback to Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. On that show, Coulson talked about Blue Hydra mind control soap that they loaded with chemicals to alter people's memories. As Vision super speeds to go get the doctor, she hears a bird chirping in the baby's room, which later turns out to be a stork, which is obviously a reference to the twin babies coming, sort of paying off the joke from earlier in the episode about where do babies come from? How could this possibly happen? Well, when a man loves a woman, then eventually you tell the joke about the storks bringing the baby. So the stork during the episode, trying to interrupt Wanda and sort of break what was happening in the reality and mess things up, was a metaphor for her getting ready to give birth, like she tried to make it go away with her powers and they do the hilarious, smoky 1970s version of her powers. When the stork is able to bat her red energy away as if it's immune to her powers, that was just a reference to her not being able to put off the birth of the twins. Like, they're coming, she's going to give birth any minute now. So during the episode, as the stork moves closer and closer to her, that's a reference to her being closer and closer to the moment that she actually gives birth, until they're in the room later and she's literally like, okay, the moment is now. Also while they were doing the comedy bit of the stork flying around in the background behind Geraldine or Monica Rambeau, she's telling this story about being promoted at her job by her boss, Mr. Haddox. I think that's a reference to her being a sword agent and being promoted to a higher position inside sword. She also jokes about Scarlet Witch having all the time in the world because, as we've seen, she controls the flow of time. She can rewind things, so she literally does have all the time in the world to do whatever she wants. The nature of the alternate reality that Scarlet Witch controls here is so powerful that it sort of puts people into these personalities and these roles that you notice that Geraldine isn't lying when she doesn't notice that Wanda is pregnant despite being super huge the entire time until she literally says, I'm giving birth right now. 
Like when a normal person in real life walked in someone's front door and saw you looking like that, that's the first thing you would say, oh my god, you are getting ready to give birth. You look really pregnant right now. They do the big comedy bit about Scarlet Witch losing control of her powers as she really goes into labor, like things are flying around everywhere, everything's turning on like the vacuum, the pictures are flying all over the place, and like I said, because all the townspeople's personalities are being controlled inside this alternate reality, she only thinks that it's a little bit weird, like I'm sure there's an explanation for all this weird stuff that's happening right now. It's not really till later in the episode that she snaps out of it and starts mentioning Ultron and Pietro Quicksilver. You also notice that as Scarlet Witch goes into labor, she also kind of comes to her senses briefly as well, saying, I don't think I can do this, and she looks really serious, like I really don't think I can do this. Just as she finishes giving birth to the first twin, Vision comes back with the doctor and makes a joke about flying, feels like we were almost flying here, like Vision was using his powers to get there super quickly. They name the first baby Tommy, who's Wiccan from the comics, he has powers like Scarlet Witch's Wiccan, Witch, powers of magic like her. That was also the name that Scarlet Witch wanted to use first, and then they have the comedy bit about the second baby coming along, which she immediately, before it even comes out, says Billy. Billy is the speed character from the comics, he has powers just like Quicksilver, as you would assume from the name. Then like I said earlier, as the doctor gets ready to leave, he sort of breaks the reality for a moment and tells him, you know what, I don't think we're gonna go on that vacation because this is a very hard place to leave. Like he also kind of realizes that he's trapped inside this alternate reality. Then as Vision thinks about it for a moment, he notices that Agatha Harkness is talking to Herb, whispering about something, confirming that when Scarlet Witch's powers fritzed out and the power went out in their house, it also went out all over the town, like she's controlling everything inside this reality. And we get what seems like another Mephisto reference when she says, don't worry, Ralph looks better in the dark, like the devil in the darkness. But before they go back in though, they also kind of get a little weird too. She stops him asking about Geraldine, Monica Rambeau. Is she in there? You know what? She's not from here. They start to bad talk her just a little bit. Like they know or Agatha Harkness knows that Monica Rambeau is an agent of S.W.O.R.D. and S.W.O.R.D. is trying to bust into this reality and stop what's happening here. But for some reason, Agatha Harkness doesn't want it to stop. Herb almost tells Vision the truth about being trapped in there and she stops him getting this really worried look on her face like she's afraid of someone and I think because of everything that happens with Scarlet Witch versus Monica Rambeau it's implied that she's afraid of Scarlet Witch. Just more of Scarlet Witch being the villain of this episode. Maybe not the ultimate villain of the series but at least for right now it seems like the other townspeople think of her as someone to be feared. Then just as this happens, she starts talking about being a twin. You know what? I was a twin as she's looking at her twins and she starts singing the Sokovian lullaby and that sort of brings Monica Rambeau to her senses and she mentions Quicksilver. He was killed by Ultron, wasn't he? Then I love the 180 turn that Scarlet Witch does in the episode getting really pissed off. Who are you? What did you just say? No, you need to get out of here right now. She notices the sword logo on her pendant. Then I love that as Vision comes back in, she's like, oh, she had to leave. And she clearly is still just sort of trying to hide what just happened. She hasn't come back to the 1970s really bubbly version of her personality yet. There's a whole bunch of footage from the trailer of Monica Rambeau getting punted through the wall all the way outside the TV reality. So I think we'll probably see a version of that scene, some of that footage in later episodes. But then as she smiles, this sort of kind of villainous seeming smile the tv frame widens the aspect ratio in the episode literally changes from 4 by 3 to 16 by 9 as you transition to the outside normal mcu dimension we're right outside the westview city limit and you see monica rambeau fly out like she's flying out of a tv set like you see the little red green blue effects as she's getting punted out you see all the sword agents tense all their gear they all rush up to meet her and she's still wearing her 1970s clothing, which I think is important because this implies that stuff that Scarlet Witch manifests inside the alternate reality, like when she changes the decade and everything looks different, all that stuff she creates is able to continue existing outside in the normal MCU reality. I think that'll be really critical for the twists later on in the series where, you know, early theory, she brings her twins, Billy and Tommy, Wiccan and Speed, and Vision back to the normal MCU dimension so that when they're older, they're teenagers in later episodes, they can go on to Young Avengers projects in the future. The whole Daydream Believer song is also another callback to the Hydra Soap commercial, the idea that Scarlet Witch went to this place where she could escape all of her problems. She's literally living in a daydream, so to speak. That's all helping set up their big X-Men storyline in the future, the new rebooted version of the X-Men movies that they'll do during Marvel Phase 5. 
we're doing the MCU's version of the House of M storyline. At the end of that, when the reality crumbled, she said no more mutants and got rid of mutants. I think we're expecting the reverse of that to happen at the end of this series, where she creates a whole bunch more mutants. But if you spotted any really big Easter eggs in the episode that I didn't mention in the video or big WTF moments, just let me know in the comments. What'll happen is I'll do more WandaVision bonus videos during the week. My episode four video will post next week just like normal. Let me know if you have any special requests or big questions. Paul Bettany also just revealed a really big Avengers Endgame post credit scene that they had to delete that was going to completely set up the WandaVision series. You can click here to watch that and you can click here for all my other WandaVision episode one and episode two videos. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you in the next video.